Now I'm going to show you how to write your follow-up email series. And what I'm going to do here is this particular video tutorial is going to be divided into two parts. The first part is that I'm going to run through with you some school of thoughts when it comes to writing your email series. And then in the next half, I'm going to go through the types of emails you can possibly write. So let's get started. When it comes to writing an email series, it's got to be purposeful and intentional. So in no particular order, we'll go through each of it step by step, okay? So the first and foremost thing here is readability. Very, very important. Now, when most people start writing their email series, they just leave it as default. Well, nothing really wrong with that, but check this out. Now, this is an example of an email where, as you can see, the, the readability is pretty good because it's neatly spaced out. The fonts are comfortably big enough. And you notice that every paragraph, there's no more than five lines, all right? It's about three to four lines per paragraph tops. So this is an example of an email with very good readability. And you have to understand that you're getting more and more viewers on mobile these days. So expect to get quite some subscribers who will be reading your email through mobile phones or tablets for the matter like iPhone, iPad, Android, you name it. So on the other hand, an example of a really bad readability would be having all this bunched up together or very, very long paragraphs with small, tiny words. So to me, the limits test is quite simply this. If you can read this email and it's comfortable on your eyes, then it passes the readability test. So that brings up to the second point here. I like to have the font size at, at least around 14 to 16, although ideally 16 is better. So it doesn't have to be too big, but at the same time, you don't want to be too small, especially if your target audience are usually around the middle age. Uh, you don't want them having difficulty squinting their eyes or, or having difficulty reading your email. So normally I put it about size 14 to 16. Uh, 16 would be the most ideal. And this depends on what kind of autoresponder you are using. I use Aweber most of the time and I use font size 16. The next point here, this comes up as a regular debate even to this day among new email marketers. How often should I send an email to my list? I'm gonna cut the chase here. You're gonna send email to your list every single day. That's right. Or you're gonna put a daily interval going on here. And here's why. If you send your email only once in a while, guess what? You're gonna lose your subscribers' attention. And I think this is very crucial. If you are shy in marketing to your prospects, guess what? Your prospects are gonna end up buying from your competitors who are not shy or they're just shameless in marketing to them because they're more daring and they're more outgoing. So this is not up for debate. Send an email every single day throughout your email series. Okay, got it? Next point. Now, I understand that whenever you start a new email campaign or a new list, you don't want to be writing several emails like into the dozens or hundreds right off the bat. That's going to be not really a good use of your time. So normally, I recommend you just start off quite humbly with anywhere from four to seven email series, but have them sent out every single day from the moment your visitor joins your list. So start off with four to seven email series. And after that, you can consider adding more afterwards. So to this day, I have email series that go anywhere from four to seven and some like 20 or 30 and above. But the most important thing is get started with just a few and you can always test out from here. Next point, number five, sell the click. Very important, do not do the selling in your email. And what this means to mean, uh, say is that quite simply this, Let's say you're promoting a product and you're selling it at a certain price. Would you want to mention the price of the product in your email? Most of the time you should not because even if it's affordable or even if it's uh, cheap, you do not want to mention it. However, you can give hints like this is going at basement price. 
There's an early bird price going on right now. There's an intro launch special. And this goes for only an investment of dinner for two. Okay? The most important thing here that whenever someone opens an email, the purpose is that you want them to click on a link to go to the website. So you can be selling your own product or be an affiliate, but never ever mention the price of the product. Although you can drop hints, but the intention of every email you send out is to send people to another website. And that's what you're gonna do. Even if you're giving away content for free, do not do it in the email series. Have them go to your blog or your website. And this creates more opportunities for you to promote or back and sell anything else. Next point, keep your emails short. Now, I'm not fussy about word length, but I would say I'll keep it anywhere from 100 to 300 words. And even then, there are times that I have written some shorter emails. Now, the most important thing here is that you want to get people clicking on the link whenever they open your email. So do not tell everything or give everything away in an email because if you do that, your subscribers will have difficulty processing what's going on and those who are not interested, guess what they do? They just trash your email away. So this is the premise of email marketing and the reason why you do follow-up email series. And that brings up to the next part of this video training. What kind of emails can you write to get people compelled and along the way build yourself as an authority figure. Now there's no definite formula to it, although in my experience, you can come up with any combination of this type of emails. Now the first type will be a very obvious one, a welcome email. So there's nothing much to it really. So normally you like to take this opportunity to introduce yourself, uh, what you're all about, and what's really important is what's in it for me or W-I-I-F-F, okay? You see, when people join your mailing list, they have a certain expectations and you have to manage that. So let's just say, for example, you are a dating coach for men. So you gotta establish your credentials, what you're all about, uh, what is your experience like, and what can you do to help the subscriber or the prospect? So what's it in for me? So address it all in the first welcome email. Now, normally compared to the other emails, the welcome email is usually the longest. However, you do not want to write too long. And you know what? You don't have to be afraid to start selling even at this point. So you want to have a call to action right off the bat in the first email, okay? Because at the end of the day, you do not want to be building a list of freebie seekers or people who are just trained to waste your time. You want to get them to be action takers and you want them to be your customers at the end of the day or even be your client for the matter. So after the first email, the next day you're going to be sending another type of email. So normally what I like to do is I like to follow up with a story email. It could be based on your personal experience. I like to call this the zero to hero moment, okay? Like who you were before and how you can relate to your prospects and where you are at right now where your prospects desire to be in your shoes. So it can go along the lines of, I used to be dateless or had problem uh, pursuing women like you. Today, things have changed because after going through an A to Z uh, training or formula or at discovery, I am now having these results. All right. Now, if you cannot come up with your own story, that's totally fine. You can always do a third party story as well. Okay, for example, now, have you know about, scratch that, did you know anything about the late Steve Jobs and what he did uh, in his last moments? And here's how you can profit from his experience. Okay, I'm just making that up by the way, but has, have, you, have you noticed that I'm using a third party story so if you don't have your own story to tell that's totally fine there are plenty of stories to tell and you do it uh, from a point of view of a third party okay so moving along if you have trained students or you have past customers who have had success with your products or your programs you can mention them in a case study and this is really good because this builds up social proof and social validation because here's the thing, nobody likes to be a pioneer and no one wants to be the first to try, okay? So your customers will not appreciate being a guinea pig 
So they like to naturally know if anyone else had done it before them and what their results were like. And this builds up more confidence. Okay, the most important thing is that you want to inspire confidence in the usage of your program or your products. So you can come up with case study or testimonials. Another type of email you can write is to bust myths. Now, one of the mistakes that marketers tend to make is that they try to, to get into teaching mode. Okay, like they try to teach new stuff. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but I would think that teaching your customers should be reserved in a paid product or a paid training. What they need is to experience a paradigm shift. Okay, they need to experience a paradigm shift, and that's why they're on your list. And you need to take this opportunity to, to be busting myths. So I'm going to use another example right now. Let's say you are selling a weight loss supplement or a weight loss program. So perhaps you can take this opportunity to bust a very commonly subscribed myth. Hey, did you know that no matter how often you go to the gym or exercise, that only accounts for 30% of your weight loss and fat burn success. The other 70%, you might find it hard to believe this is actually in the food you eat. And even so, it's not something that's readily available because you need to undo all the past damage you have done to your body and reverse the aging of your muscles. And this is why I recommend you get on my training or get these supplements. So as you can see, what I just did here is that I had been I just busted a myth that most people subscribe to. And what you can do is say that you can take this opportunity to list out maybe two to three of the most common myths that a lot of people believe in this market that you're in right now. Now, the next two type emails are pretty much no brainers ready. Sometimes some people just need a reminder and you can say, hey, um, just a reminder in case you haven't checked this out just yet. And here's a recap. So you notice there's nothing much to it. And why reminders are very powerful is because sometimes some people don't just buy on first contact. They might need a little bit of persuasion or, or reminders, or sometimes they might have been away or not so attentive when they got your emails the first time. And maybe, just maybe, something in their life has changed and it, it just grew more urgent. And this is why reminders are very powerful. And the next type of email is called the last calls. If you're running a time sensitive sale or, or a special discount that's on for a very short time, last calls will really, really help uh, drive in sales in the last moments because scarcity is a very powerful driving force. Nobody likes to miss out. So there's this thing called uh, FOMO or FOMO, fear of missing out. It's just built naturally to most people, okay? So you can leverage on this, okay? Now, there are many more types of emails I can get into, but with these six email types alone, you can write many, many emails and put them all into your autoresponder. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.